Okay, today we're going to go over CC1 1.1.4 review and preview. So problem 28 says that the table below shows data for winter temperatures in Urbana, Illinois. You will brainstorm questions that could be answered using all the data, or using the data. Part A, we're asking a question that could be answered using all the data. So I'm going to look at my data first, and I'm going to notice Okay, there's the years from 1990 all the way to 2009. And there's the average winter temperature listed as well. So if I'm thinking about questions that could use all of my data, I could think of questions that about mean, median, and range, or at mean is average, or the average. Okay, what is the average winter temperature in Urbana, Illinois? from 1990 to 2009, okay? So I'm gonna write that down. What is the average temperature in Urbana, Illinois, and it's average winter temperature from 1990 to 2009. Now I need to create a question that could be answered using just some of the data. So I could rephrase my question from part A, okay, and use a specific date range. So I'm going to ask, well, what is the average winter temperature in Urbana, Illinois from, I'm going to use just this first column here, from 1990 to 1999. Okay, that will work. It, it's asking a question about some of my dates, not all of my dates, which means it's some of my data. For part C, we're going to think back about how we have done past problems from class on how we could organize this data. So, one of the ways I could try making a histogram or making a table okay problem 29 uses a histogram we are using the histogram below to answer the following questions. The histogram contains the amount of snowfall in Urbana, Illinois during the winter from 1990 to 2009. So which range of snowfall amount measurements occurred the most often? Well, the most often would be the highest bar. So that would be this bar right here which means that the range of snowfall would be 20 to 25 inches. I want to include 20 and 25 because it's somewhere in between those amounts. I don't know exactly. Part B, were there any years with unusually high or low snow snowfall amounts? Okay. Well, there was one year where they had less than five inches of snow. That's right here. Less than five inches of snow. So I'm going to actually put that down because it's only one year of it. Everything else has two or more years. So one year had less than five inches of snow. Half the years had snowfall amounts above how many inches? 
So I can add up the heights of all the bars. Okay, so one plus five is six. Okay, six plus two is eight. Eight plus three is 11. 11 plus six is 17. And 17 plus three is 20. So there's 20, 20 years shown in the histogram. So we need to count till we reach half of 20, which is 10, okay? So we're gonna start from the right, okay? And count down until we reach half of 20, which is 10. So if I start from the right, that's this side. So there's three plus six is nine. And 10 would fall between 15 and 20. So I'm gonna say about half had snowfall at or above 15 inches because my 20th one would have been here. So that's above 15 inches. So half, about half had more than 15 inches. Okay, our next problem, we are cop we are looking at number patterns, okay? We're assuming the pattern continues as shown and we have to describe each pattern in words. Okay, so I go from two to seven, seven to 12, 12 to 17, 17 to 22. What I'm noticing is that it's moving by five. Two plus five is seven, seven plus five is 12, 12 plus five is 17. 17 plus 5 is 22. 22 plus 5 is 27. 27 plus 5 is 32. 32 plus 5 is 37. 37 plus 5 is 42. Each number is growing by five. Okay. Also, if you notice, the ones place value changes two, seven, two, seven, two, seven, two, seven, two. Okay. There are a lot of ways to describe each pattern. Okay, part B, one to four. Well, I know it's adding three. Four to nine. Adding five, nine to sixteen, seven, sixteen to twenty five is nine. What is going on? So if I look, three, five, seven, nine, it's growing. Each number is growing by the next odd number. My example, three, five, seven, nine. Okay, so 25, I would add 11, which would be 36 plus 13. This 49 plus 15. 64 plus 17 is 81. Okay. So part C, I'm going to look at this. So one to one, I didn't add anything. One to two, I added one. Two to three, I added one. Three to five, I added two. Five to eight, I added three. But if I pay attention... So two plus one is three. Three plus two is five. Five plus three is eight. It's adding the number right behind it. So each number 
is adding the number before it. Okay, so 8 plus 5 is 13. 13 plus 8 is 21. 21 plus 13 is 34. 34 plus 21 is 55. Okay, problem 31. Round each number to the specified place. Part A, it is supposed to say 100. It is a typo, but we'll go with thousandth. There is no thousandth place, so I'm going to have to write down numbers until I get to my thousandths place. So six is in my tenths place, hundreds, thousandths. Okay, if you are rounding to a hundreds place, it's good practice. I'm going to look at my number in the hundreds place. I'm going to look to the number to the right. It's a nine, so it would be 5,300. 300. Okay, round 492 and 3,069 ten thousandths to the nearest thousandth. The three is in the tenth, zero is in the hundredth, six is in the thousandth. Look to the right. Everything before my underlined number stays the same. Because the nine is five or higher, my six pushes to a seven. Round 45,469 and 23 hundredths to the nearest thousand. I'm going to go to my thousandth place, thousands place, which is my five. I'm going to look next to it. It is less than five. So I keep my five the same and everything else turns to zeros. Round 7,526 and 442 thousandths to the nearest hundredth. Tenths, hundredths is my this second four. I look to the right because the two is less than five. It stays the same and all the numbers before my hundredth place are still the same. So 7,526 and 44 hundredths. And I put a zero at the end if I need to reuse it. Okay, problem 32. The graph at right shows how far Ben is from home during a typical school day. Keyword there, it's a school day. Use the graph to answer the questions. Write your answers in complete sentences. What was Ben doing between 7 and 8 a.m.? So if I look at 7 to 8, it's this, he's moving, right? He's not just staying still, he's moving. So, I think Ben is probably riding the bus to school. Okay, what do you think Ben was doing between 9 a.m. and 2.30 p.m.? I'm going to look at 9 a.m. That's here. 2.30 p.m. is right at the end of that flat spot. Well, if he's staying still, he's staying that far from home the whole time. That means, and it's a school day, Ben is probably at school. What time did Ben leave to return to his starting point? So this spot is between 2 and 3. It's about 2.30 p.m. So when that distance from home starts to change, we know he's leaving. So when he's going towards home, because we're going back to 0. So Ben is riding the bus home. He could be riding his bike to school or his parent could be dropping him off. Okay. The main thing is noticing that when this slant occurs, that means that he's moving. His distance is moving. 
Okay, that is all of the problems for 114. If you have any questions, please come and ask.